If you turn to page 149 in the front of the hymnal, the very front, you'll be ready to do what you need to do when I cue you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that, loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to our offering of praise.
Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter has been sent to the house of Cornelius, who is a centurion of the Italian cohort. So he's a Gentile, a foreigner. And uh, Peter was told uh, that God was also interacting with these strange people. He goes to the home. He pro proclaims a sermon that God shows no partiality. And then this is what happens in the rest of chapter 10. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell down upon, upon all who believed. So that the circumcised believers who'd come with Peter were astonished that even the Gentiles had the Holy Spirit come down upon them. Because they were speaking in tongues and, and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can withhold water from baptizing these people who've received the same Spirit as we have. And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then they invited him to stay for several days. The Word of God. John makes it clear that the love of God in Christ Jesus is the key to our living in the world. We love all God's other children with the love that has been shown to us. Reading from the book of 1 John 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is truth. Word of God, word of life. I invite you to put your bulletins to the side and listen to the gospel. And Jesus said to them, The kingdom that comes from God is like this. A man plants a seed in the ground, and he sleeps, he rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and lengthens. He doesn't know how. On its own, the ground produces the fruit, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. And when it offers up its yield, he sends out the sickle, because the harvest is ready. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Ooh, I let you stand for the Gospel. That's unusual. Grace to you and peace from the God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may have noticed that during uh, the Easter season, we've been going back, we've stayed in the Gospel of, of Mark, and we've looked at texts that mention people rising up. And so today the text we chose is this, every person who sleeps and rises night and day and while he's doing that work, um, God is busy bringing about the fruit. 
It was my idea that we kind of stay in the Gospel of Mark and think about these everyday risings. And as I got ready for this the last Sunday uh, of Easter, I thought, why did I do this? Here I am having to think about resurrection again, think about what it means. And then I realized, well, that's exactly the point with resurrection. Having to begin anew and rethink it again. Faith in the resurrection is not a one-and-done deal. In fact, it cannot be. We must go through it again and again and again. We hear the gospel and trust the God who speaks to us, but then doubt enters in, or death shows its grimace again, or disease or our own disastrous decisions. And God must raise us up again, turning doubt into trust, grief into grace, disease into at-easeness with what we cannot control, failure into fruitfulness. All these are little resurrections. The confidence that comes with the risen Christ is less a resurrection hope, you have to listen carefully here, is less a resurrection hope than a resurrected one. It is not a hope raised once within us never to die, but rather it is a hope that God must raise again and again and again when despair, death, and doubt do their worst to us. Like all truths that matter, we must learn it again and again. The text for today speaks of a a rhythm as predictable as sleeping and rising. God has given us a community so that we remember this rhythm of God. God has given us not just a community, but this community. Together, we acknowledge the reality of death, and then confess the God who gives life. When I doubt, I lean into your faith. When you stand by the side of the grave, your friends in Christ gather beside you. When disease taunts you, we circle ourselves around you so that you feel the community praying for your health and well-being. And when we fail, even when we fail each other, we learn forgiveness from the risen Christ and do our best to offer it to each other. So resurrection, or rather this resurrecting, is part of our individual Christian life. And there's a community that God uses to ensure that it happens. But also I want to say that the faith of that community or the faith of this community, this church, is also a faith that the risen Christ calls to not be a one-and-done deal. We face each day that is new with newness. Our understanding changes, blossoms, and grows, even our understanding of who God is in our midst. There's a, a hymn that you might remember, The Church of Christ, in every age, beset by change, yet spirit-led, must rise and claim its heritage and keep on rising from the dead. And so those first friends of Jesus could not be content with their small circle of well-known friends. Those first friends of Jesus had to meet friends of Jesus in other nations as the Spirit was poured upon them. And God did not rest after that work was done. As though, okay, now we've expanded the circle once. We're done with that. Big enough forever. God is a God of life, and life does not stand still. Life is growth. And the God of the resurrected Christ has even more friends, more than those we've come to feel at home with that are waiting for an introduction to us. So Christians do not simply return to yesterday's questions, even less to the answers of yesterday. 
Today has questions of its own that are blossoming and that demand new answers. So we find ourselves asking questions even about things we once thought were settled. In our own church, in the ELCA, as I mentioned during the announcements, we're re-looking at our relationship with religions that are not Christian. We ask, what is God doing in these religions, through these religions, even though they don't call on the name of Jesus? Maybe once again, God is expanding our awareness about how and where God is working in the world. We're invited to ask what it means if the love and compassion and grace we know in Jesus has been also given to those who are not part of our own community, the church. This does not mean that anything goes or that everything done in the name of some God or another's uh, name is automatically holy or sacred or good. We don't walk into this conversation with the answers already settled. But we go trusting that God is full of surprises and way bigger and way more loving and way more gracious and way more mysterious than even God's best witnesses have understood. We go knowing that both death and resurrection, loss and gain, will be part of this conversation, this process. But most importantly, we go with the one who died and was raised, Jesus Christ, trusting that surprising us with newness is his signature move. Thanks be to God. Amen. We should sing.
Rejoice in the, rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray for the witness of the church, the wholeness of creation, and all those who are in need. Holy God, your voice calls us to worship. Where discord disrupts your church, unite us in love. Where we are confused, guide us in your way. Lord, in your mercy. Creative Lord, your word formed the earth and all that is in it. Receive the roar of the sea and clap of the rivers. Rejoice as the hills ring out in praise. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, you hear all our moans and groans. Where lament resounds, send us to listen and respond with comfort. Be with those who are in need of healing, especially those whom we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Provider of our every need, feed the hungry, care for the homeless, and make us instruments of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be with people of faith throughout the world and unite us in the work of the peace you desire for your creation. Lead the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America as we seek to understand our relationship with people of different religions. We pray for those with whom we share our building, the Society of Friends and Plymouth United Church of Christ. May mutual respect and a love like yours be present in all we do. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands we entrust all these things, all our hopes, fears, and dreams. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share that peace. Peace, Phil. O Lord, in the breaking of bread, as you were made known to the disciples. Receive these gifts, the offering of our lives, that we may be your risen body in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. 
And so with Mary Magdalene and with Peter and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after he had eaten, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer that our Lord teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All who are here present are welcome to come forward and receive these gifts if you are hungry to receive them. Uh, we trust that some of you may be the new friends that Jesus wishes to introduce us to. Now let us feast this day on Christ, the bread of heaven. Please be seated. given for you, Dolores.
Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us, send us forth, forth as, as witnesses, witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, resurrection that, that we may show your glory to all the world. world. Through, Through the same Jesus, Jesus Christ, our, our risen Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. May the God who has brought us from the dead to life fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 550.
He has risen indeed. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.